dynamics on the um, the loudness on the um, scene where with the music um, where the music is making um, the mi the mixer on the music doing the, uh, the music mixer and then you got the effects mixer you got the dialogue mixer and <laughs> yeah um, if if it was some other film maybe mixed a dose I think it might be done differently you know director producer whatever you know all that um <clears throat> decision um I'm sure the actual the actual track on itself um you know I mean it's not as if there's anything wrong it's just that um I suppose in reality, uh, yelling, you know, sort of like, um, sort of, uh, um, not diehardish yell, like, you know, <laughs> whatever. Alright, uh, just play the center stage, center channel. Obviously, the kick is a bit more louder, or the yelling. But I'm listening to the music mix in the center stage, which is playing at a slightly lower level because I can hear it at per certain periods of time um, where the music mixer is bringing it down a little bit and then maybe the effects mix is just nudging up the effects slightly in the center stage. Bit, bit. Now that's stage right. I'll put the center stage in. And about now. So I can have the yell. And I'll put the Put the left stage on only with the center because when you got the stage left and the right you can get a bit of masking frequency masking i'll put the stage right on i mean everything else is playing loud you know and the spl's reading loudish and Plus, I don't want it going too loud, so I've got the audio lenses on. So they'll they'll only clamp down on what frequencies are peaking highest. Gotta sort of like something like this. You gotta kind of treat it like it was a small multiplex, and yeah. Um, well in this case, I'll be treating it more like if it was something like UCI Town at Tower Park, um, Cine World, I think it is now, or View, or whatever it's called. <laughs> um, relation to the bigger auditoriums where screen would be a little bit more larger size itself but still a bit of distance away from the side walls where the smaller auditoriums were the screen width was wall to wall uh, side wall to side wall and very highish up in you know the angle and such and then the floor slopes down sort of thing and then it flattens out near to the front um, and then the highest peak in the auditorium would be um, 
roughly at the the very front where from floor to the ceiling and then as it gradually moved back you know it changes several inches inches and inches and inches until feet and such uh, until it gets towards the very back of the auditorium and then it's uh, the, the height floor to ceiling is um, <clears throat> a bit different a bit, bit shallow in the height but still pretty high up um, 20 feet at least I think um, I think 20 feet something like that um, probably about 30, 30 footish near to the front but the auditoriums were very I'm not, I didn't see this in Tower Park I saw it at the, uh, another cinema ABC um, in the larger auditorium, screen one, just Dolby Stereo Matrix, because uh, the auditorium cinema didn't have a um, SRD installed at the time. Uh, no. <laughs> Even still, here in, here in Mission Impossible, I mean, if I can download it to. an Aries yell a little bit um, clearer a different slightly in the matrix mix go the pitch still now now I can hear it I can hear it Um, the ABC would have had uh, some of the components behind the screen similar to mine. The uh, the base drivers might be um, might be the twenty the triple two six or might be the triple two five, uh, but the forty six seventy five A um, speaker HF horn would be the twenty three sixty. But the compression driver, most likely the same compression driver that I'm running, the 2446, um, except for the horn size, the 2380A, which is A OK. <laughs> um, so, which would be, so if I were to think, put this in a smaller auditorium, yeah. Um, this sort of what, what's behind the screen, yeah, we go in a small screen auditorium, uh, even though the speaker roughly had, would be uh, okay for a 400 seat auditorium. Um, I just wonder if how many home theatres could actually hear that yell, even though it doesn't go like, ah, like that. Ah, <laughs> like that, which is, you know, because um, <laughs> if I play it again, um, and just mute this, mute the east stage left, right. Put the camera a little bit nearer, and I'll turn the fader up just a little bit. So I'll mimic that. Ah! Ah! That's obviously louder, isn't it? <laughs> but then I... What the illusion here in the mixes you've got to create is a tr you're on the top of the train and it's pushing air and you get all this... Um, because you're just pushing through air. A constant speed of um, whatever how many miles that is going if it was going 100 miles it's you know it's just it's just like when you open the window on a car and you hear the wind coming and if you were just 
if I were just listening to two people or just one person, just speaking and listening, it's going to be a lot of difficulty in understanding. Um, all I'll get is a certain, depending on if that person's not taking, if that person's not taking into account that, that the window's down and it's it's loud, you've got to raise your voice level up and modulate your your speech. Um, and you know there's a lot of things you might not even think of but this scene yeah uh, you know you got this train moving at fast speed so the re reality of it in real would probably be much 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 greater loudness uh, than the film mix um, Not to mention the absurdity of the whole thing is just loose, stupid and ludicrous. <laughs> Especially when the helicopter blows up and he flies off and then hits that. F oh, flipping that. You're going you're gonna to have a damaged rib cage, you know, in your chest. and You'll all be bandaged up in the hospital for months. <laughs> That's just stupid. <laughs> but, hmm...